Guys, what is up? Um, hari ini mungkin pembicaraan gue akan sedikit berat um, di mana gue akan ngobrol bersama satu yayasan namanya Project Karma. Jadi kalau misalnya lu di sini bukan orang tua, nggak apa-apa. <laughs> kalau misalnya lu di sini bukan um, let's say seorang abang atau kakak yang mempunyai adik kecil. You know, you don't have to watch this. Tapi kalau misalnya lu di sini mempunyai seorang kenalan atau mungkin seseorang yang lu sayang yang umurnya mungkin 12 tahun atau 12 tahun ke bawah gitu ya, uh, between mungkin 6 tahun, 7 tahun sampai 12 sampai 15 tahun. Um, apakah lu adalah orang tua tersebut? Please nonton ini karena gua akan live dan gua bakal ngobrol Soal sesuatu isu yang mungkin uh, jarang banget dibahas sama orang karena ini adalah sesuatu yang tabu Tapi um, kita semua harus tahu Jadi ternyata banyak banget kasus dimana uh, Apa yang kita bilang dengan child sexual exploitation atau eksploitasi anak gitu um, Dalam hal seksual di sini jadi Gua, again, kalau misalnya lu lagi puasa dan lu ngerasa terganggu dengan pembicaraan kita, please go out. <laughs> you know, gak perlu ngikutin, it's okay. Gua tahu ini kayaknya uh, bukan untuk semua orang, dan gue juga bakal ngomong bahasa Inggris di sini. So, um, gua pengen banget, nanti sih gua akan berusaha banget sebisa mungkin untuk men- menerjemahkan juga ya pembicaraan kita, karena... Um, dengan sekarang pandemi COVID-19 ini banyak sekali anak-anak di rumah, banyak sekali orang tua yang fokus bekerja di rumah. Sehingga yang terjadi adalah mereka nggak nggak sempat untuk ngurusin anaknya lagi, anaknya udah dikasih gadget aja gitu. Nah, jadi sekarang gue akan ngomong sama seorang spesialis, dan si spesialis ini dia dari uh, Project Karma Foundation. Uh, dia akan ngobrol-ngobrol, namanya Glenn. Uh, dia sekarang ini lagi ada di Melbourne um, dan kita ya yeah, let's, uh, let's let's talk to Glenn. Glenn, what's up? You are online. You are live. But yeah, how can are you? you? Can you see me? Hang on, I'll try if I move it this way. Is that better? Bad idea. <laughs> Bad idea. Okay. <laughs> There you go. So um, I just introduce you practically to everyone, like um, who you are and what you do um i'm just gonna very quickly say that in indonesian um i'm sure you know you're you know some of you indonesian so you know you know what i'm talking about jadi sekali lagi ini uh, adalah glenn halley glenn halley di sini dia adalah seseorang uh, dia dulunya polisi di australia dan uh, saat itu ketika dia di kambo kambodia right uh, di kambodia dia ditawarin um, yang namanya prostitusi anak gitu itu sampai seumur let's say 12 tahun maybe 12 tahun atau mungkin bisa lebih rendah lagi gitu jadi kayak um, lumayan menarik sih ceritanya dia gitu dan dia saat itu hati dia sangat uh, hancur banget ya kayak ada orang berani-beraninya nawarin bule uh, yang saat itu di Kambodia di bar uh, seorang anak kecil yang benar-benar nggak tahu apa-apa dan uh, Glenn sendiri juga mempunyai seorang uh, mempunyai beberapa anak juga dan dia langsung ngerasa, oke okay, ini misi hidup gue sekarang. Gue harus menghancurkan yang namanya prostitusi anak di, di Southeast Asia dulu lah. Di Asia Tenggara dulu gitu. Dan dia membuat um, project karma ini untuk melakukan hal tersebut. Karena dengan background dia sebagai uh, detektif, sebagai investigator gitu ya. Uh, sama sebagai seseorang yang emang... Um, apa ya pedulilah sama hal-hal ini jadi sekarang ini dia udah um, membangun project karma ini di Bali and uh, in Vietnam if I'm, uh, Vietnam or Thailand sorry I might I might be wrong with that um, in Bali Vietnam and Thailand Glenn was it yeah Thailand and uh, in the Philippines as well and the Philippines right so um, jadi, again, kalau misalnya kalian pengen uh, nanya pertanyaan, kalau misalnya kalian adalah orang tua, sekarang sekali lagi ya, gue ingetin ya, kalau misalnya kalian adalah orang tua di sini atau uh, seorang kakak yang peduli sama adiknya, um, kalian pengen bertanya-tanya, please langsung tanya, buka melalui komen, tapi melalui uh, si question and answer box. Nanti gue akan, gue hanya baca pertanyaan dari question and answer box itu. 
Jadi uh, kalian bisa nanya-nanya. Ini adalah sebuah isu yang menurut gue jarang banget diobrolin sama orang, jarang banget disentuh karena ini mungkin bisa dibilang sesuatu yang tabu. Tapi karena ini sesuatu yang tabu, semakin banyak orang atau semakin banyak predator orang-orang jahatnya menggunakan kesempatan itu. Karena mereka tahu anak-anaknya sendiri nggak bisa ngomongin tentang hal ini di rumah bersama orang tuanya. Karena ini sesuatu yang tabu. Dan orang tuanya sendiri juga kadang-kadang kayak Mm, you know what, gue nggak nyaman nih ngomongin tentang hal ini kepada anak, dengan anak-anak gue Sehingga akhirnya isu ini nggak pernah disentuh sama sekali uh, Dan yang terjadi adalah si predator ini yang menggunakan kesempatan ini untuk lebih uh, mengeksploitasi si anak gitu So, uh, very quick question um, You know, we, we're gonna have a lo- long list of questions This is gonna be a conversation I'm gonna stop in between and translate it in Indonesian But uh, yeah, yeah um, I know you're based in Melbourne, but I want to focus specifically in Indonesia because I, I've heard um, many things over the last few years in Indonesia about the danger to children online by pedophiles and child sex offenders. Yeah. Um, what are the type of crimes that your organization or Project Karma is seeing happen to children online? Yeah, we, we receive reports from many countries. Uh, obviously, like you said, we are based uh, in Australia, but we also have uh, a charity, a foundation, Yayasan, based in, uh, in Indonesia, our, our office yeah. being in Bali. And uh, these types of crimes that we see specifically in Indonesia, uh, there's different ways that these crimes are committed. Um, a common one that we see, we just completed a case in Thailand last week uh, where we had uh, an adult posing as... Uh, as a, another child uh, of the same age and creating a, uh, a friendship um, and, and entering into what we call a grooming process, which we can, we can talk about a bit later. We're winning the trust of, of that child in a friendship. Uh, but the child is thinking that, that the, uh, the other person is actually another child when in fact it's an adult uh, who has very different intentions of, uh, of befriending that child. Sometimes uh, we see, and I know you've got to summarize this for, for, for yeah. translation, but so, so we see uh, adults posing as children. We also see adults posing as uh, celebrities, uh, well-known music, musicians or uh, movie stars pretending to be that person's profile on, a, on an Instagram or a, uh, you know, a, a Facebook type platform uh, and striking up a, a private message conversation where they've fooled the other the child into believing that they are actually that celebrity, again, with the intent of, of building that trust. Uh, and the third type of thing that we see is, uh, is actually children committing the offences against children uh, within the schools. So you might have a, a girlfriend and boyfriend type relationship. Uh, there may be some sexual activity if they're you know, an older uh, senior high school type scenario. Uh, and in that relationship, there might be some intimate photographs that have been shared. Uh, now, one of the other party of that relationship might think it's cool to send that to one of their friends Uh, or the relationship might end, and out of spite, they might post those photographs online or share yeah. those photographs and to share those things to family. So these are all types yeah. of offences that are committed um, by by winning the friendship and trust of somebody online, and then yeah. uh, with the goal of obtaining some personal information, personal photographs or videos that can then be then used to further manipulate and blackmail that person. Yeah. Ya, yeah. so, um, oke, okay. jadi tadi Glenn bilang gitu, kalau misalnya uh, ada tiga tipe yang terjadi di Indonesia dan itu sering banget. Yang pertama adalah seorang dewasa yang uh, mereka pasang profile picture uh, anak SMP misalnya, atau anak SMA, atau mungkin bahkan ya anak SMP-an lah ya. Dan mereka pasang profile picture-nya itu, dan habis itu mereka reach out, uh, mereka uh, ngomong ke si uh, korban, si anak. anak SMP ini um, dan mereka bilang oh ya gue sebenarnya juga anak seumuran lo kayak gitu padahal ini adalah orang dewasa atau om-om atau tante-tante gitu yang jelas-jelas lagi lagi ngomong dan lagi ngegroom gitu nanti kita akan bicarain soal grooming dan yang kedua uh, adalah selebriti uh, uh, dan ini ini actually sempat terjadi dengan salah satu sahabat gue uh, Melanie Ricardo ya uh, jadi Um, ada orang yang aku sebagai Melanie Ricardo me, um, apa, mengadakan 
casting gitu casting uh, dan mereka mencari anak-anak dan ternyata itu adalah pedofilia yang lagi menyamar sebagai Melanie Ricardo misalnya seperti itu dan um, dan yang ketiga adalah um, you know anak-anak sumuran dengan anak-anak sumuran tapi mereka mungkin uh, sudah pacaran misalnya dan habis itu mereka mulai tukeran foto-foto yang tidak senonoh dan ketika mereka putus atau mereka marah atau apa itu dijadiin ancaman Uh, foto tersebut kalau misalnya itu akan disebar gitu dan ini sering banget terjadi di Indonesia dan um, you know dan ini adalah kasus-kasus yang sering ditangkap oleh Glenn sendiri gitu ya so yeah tell me about grooming man what's uh, tadi kita sempat yeah grooming is a is a term that's become popular uh in different parts of the world to explain a behavior um in recent times where uh, it's been identified the method in which uh an adult uh has to be able to win the trust of of their victim uh, a pedophile yeah. or a child sex offender needs to be able to win the trust of their victim obviously this is a very intimate crime quite often it occurs um between two people there's very rarely witnesses uh to these types of crimes so the adult needs to have access to that child and it needs to be in a trusted environment and we see this in the physical world where we will see a family member or a, a friend of the family a trusted person it might be a sports coach or a teacher uh that can win the trust of the family which is very important part of winning the trust of the child and this all yeah. has to happen before a sexual offence can occur so yeah. that whole process is what uh is what's referred to as grooming Uh, an adult winning the trust of the child and often a family and other and other guardians of that child in okay. order to get access to that child and be able to commit the crimes without being uh revealed without the crimes being reported or without being found out Jadi grooming itu adalah sebuah proses di mana si uh, orang dewasa tersebut itu mulai memenangkan kepercayaan dari si anak tersebut. Nah, sayangnya karena ini adalah uh, kejahatan yang hanya terjadi di antara dua orang, jadi saksi itu jarang banget ada gitu. Jadi jarang banget ada witness atau saksi. Nah, sehingga uh, apa yang terjadi? Intimasi-intimasi yang terjadi di di secara digital misalnya melalui Facebook, melalui Twitter, melalui Instagram itu mungkin enggak bisa dilihat sama siapa-siapa karena itu adanya cuma di DM antara si uh, pedofilia tersebut atau si child sexual offender dengan si anak tersebut gitu. Makanya jadi sekarang ini again um, Inilah yang kita harus perhatikan banget ya. Apalagi sekarang seperti tadi saya bilang juga di zaman pandemi COVID-19 ini, semua orang rata-rata harus ada di rumah. Orang tuanya mulai bekerja lagi di rumah dan anak-anaknya disuruh udah nih nih handphone, please jangan ganggu gue. Gue lagi pengen kerja. Lo uh, udah lu mau ngapain aja di handphone terserah deh kayak gitu kan. Dan sehingga akhirnya di situlah predator-predator ini mulai bekerja gitu. So um, you were saying um, the adult was trying to establish a trust right what is, what is usually the strategy for the adult to um to manipulate or or to establish that type of trust uh um you know within the child uh, and what is their intention of doing it yeah they good, good question um okay so A pedophile is, is somebody that that actually suffers from a, a mental disorder that's been defined okay. uh, by by medical science uh, as a disorder and there's very little understanding of what pedophilia or pedophilic disorder uh, actually is in society and that's not just in Indonesia believe me as you know my background working in many countries uh, and I can even say that of my home country uh, the understanding of pedophilic disorder is very low uh, not many people understand the true nature of of the disorder and what it causes in a person. Uh yeah. quite often we just we write these people off as being sick, uh you know, just evil, these types of things, but it it is far much more scientific than that. Um essentially yeah. what science says is that a a person that suffers pedophilic disorder is a person that is attracted to uh prepubescent children, sexually attracted to prepubescent children. And so therefore the the motivation of a person uh, who suffers this disorder uh to contact a child is really for one reason and that is to uh in some way sexually interact at some point with that child now if you've never met that child before 
uh, you only bar partially know that child, that's a very difficult um, process uh, to not be found out. Obviously, this is illegal. It's illegal in nearly every country around the world. It's illegal in Indonesia. Uh, so a person that wants to engage in this type of activity will not want to be discovered, will not want the, the, the parents or, or guardians to find out, will not want the police to find out. So they have to engage in tactics with a child that are going to be able to hide their intentions. And so this right. is where the, 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 the process of grooming comes into it. What they do mm. is grooming is about winning the trust of the child. So whether they're pretending to be somebody else, like I said before, a child or uh, another child or a celebrity or something, or whether they are posing mm -hmm. as, as an adult themselves, it will usually type of, um, you know, compliments, much gratification of, of, of the victim to make the victim mm. feel that they're special, uh, to win that, to, to firstly, so that the, the, the victim feels comfortable and confident uh, that, the, that, that this person is making them feel better than anybody else that they're around, uh, so mm. that they want to have more contact with that person. It makes them feel good about themselves. Uh, mm. So the person that's conducting this activity is aware of these feelings in the child and will play to those feelings. Mm. So that is the, the method in which they will do it. They will continually build trust of feeling, uh, how, how would I explain, like feeling the water, like touching their way through to see how far they can sure. uh, push mm. the boundaries with yeah, the boundaries. without overstepping. Yeah. So that each yeah. time that they have further contact, they're continually expanding the boundaries of what that child might believe would be acceptable and unacceptable. So they're okay. very uh, adept at being able to choose a child that may be lacking in the knowledge of these types of things. Uh, if a child displays straight away that they're reluctant to provide personal details or things like that, uh, a pedophile or a child sex offender may, may likely to back off and choose another target, which is why we're running a campaign like this. So, um, jadi kalau misalnya tadi Glenn bilang, um, gimana cara pedofilia itu bekerja, gitu, apalagi melalui digital, dia uh, akan berusaha, you know, uh, sebisa mungkin untuk kayak mem memperbesar um, apa ya, boundary-nya dia, gitu. Jadi kayak misalnya, uh, man, I don't know how to explain this as well, it's really hard. Um, so, so for example, kayak, kayak contohnya gitu ya, dia bilang, oh, boleh nggak... Uh, saya ngelakuin apa? Pokoknya intinya, intinya, goalnya dia adalah secara seksual mengeksploitasi si anak tersebut gitu. Um, itu goal terbesarnya. Tapi menuju ke situ ada banyak banget yang dia akan lakuin supaya si anak tersebut misalnya mulai mendapatkan kepercayaan dari si uh, pedofilia itu gitu. Jadi dia bilang mungkin dia bergaya seperti anak kecil lainnya lah. Dia taruh profile picture. Uh, you know, anak SMA lainnya lah Atau anak SMP lainnya yang ganteng-ganteng gitu kan Dan habis itu orang kayak, eh siapa nih Dan lain-lain gitu, jadi banyak banget strategi-strateginya Dan untuk mendapatkan Kepercayaan dari si anak tersebut, sehingga si anak tersebut Akhirnya mulai mau melakukan Apa yang dia suruh Apa yang dia dia minta gitu Sedikit demi sedikit si anak tersebut akan percaya Semakin percaya, semakin percaya, semakin percaya Dan suatu saat tiba-tiba, boom Ketika mungkin bisa dijemput, hai, gue udah nunggu di depan rumah, langsung cabut, dan ternyata itu bukan si foto uh, yang dia pampang di uh, sosial media si anak tersebut, gitu. Nah, um, you know, sekarang ini, you know, uh, Glenn, obviously today is like uh, kids are spending a lot more time online right now, and and is, is that like a risk? Uh, especially, you know, for the kids itself, and you know, it's uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. So, as you rightly just said, there's there's many more people online right now than usual. Uh, obviously, Indonesia is not the only country that's going through uh, lockdowns yeah. or, or or social social restrictions at the moment. Yeah. So many countries around the world that schools have closed, so so kids are at home. Uh, in many parts of Indonesia, they're trying to run schools from home, teachers interacting with their kids using uh, digital yeah. technology, kids trying to do it from home. Uh, I know at the moment myself, uh, I've got two kids here with me every day doing their schooling from home. One of them said that he wanted to come and say hello to you earlier. But... Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> 
Um, but I know you yourself have, have kids you know, at home as well. So yeah. um, what we find is, is, is at the moment, many more kids are online. Many more people are online. Telecommunications companies in many countries, including in Indonesia, have provided data to show the massive uh, spike that, is, that has occurred from everybody being at home at the moment. Um, and so what all that means is, is obviously a lot more people online, more kids online, but it also means a lot more predators online. And yeah. what we do know is before, uh, before this, this, uh, this uh, um, pandemic, uh, there was, there's data that shows there was at any given time estimated to be around 750,000 child sex offenders or pedophiles uh, no. online at any no. given time. Yeah, that's, that's the data that is before, clean, before uh, the pandemic out there. Before uh, the pandemic. Available. Sorry, say that again. Before the pandemic? Yeah, before the pandemic. So if we know there's now more people and more kids online, it's, it's fair to say that there's going to be even more predators online. So to, to think 750,000 at any given time and your child is on the same medium as those 750,000 uh, plus uh, at any given time that your child's on there. And as we've said now, kids are at home more. Parents are trying to work from home. It's very hard to, uh, you know, help them with their schooling online, plus do their job from home online and also be then policing their online activity when they're not doing their schooling. And these are all very big challenges for parents, but we really want to push the point here in Indonesia and any other country that this is a big threat. And the reason it's such a big threat is not just because there's so many more predators online and kids online. The other side of this, which a lot of people haven't really seen yet, is that many of these platforms uh, that the kids are using, popular apps and platforms, gaming, social media apps, uh, you know, we see some of the big ones like Roblox, um, TikTok, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Messenger. All these apps uh, all require staff to be moderating the content and the interactions between people on these platforms. And many of them have spent a lot of money and a lot of research and a lot of time setting up safety uh, initiatives, um, software programs to help uh, automatically uh, identify illegal content and remove it. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff that these companies have done to, to try to build safety into their, their product for children. However, a lot of these systems are still very, very heavily reliant upon a human element, upon a moderator, upon a person who's employed to receive complaints and reports from people uh, and analyse uh, the data and then make a determination whether that content be removed, a profile be taken down, authorities need to be uh, 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 notified, those types of scenarios. And the point is at the moment with this pandemic is that these platforms are companies just like every other business and they are affected by the lockdowns like everybody else. So many of their staff, their moderation staff that deal with these types of safety issues are now at home. And not all of them have the type of access to these systems that they have when they're at the office. And so mm. we have a huge problem here where we are all aware there's been a massive spike in usage of kids on these platforms. We know there's a massive spike of general online usage with many more predators on, on, online at, at any given time. But we know that there's now a reduced capacity to protect children and other people using these platforms on a daily basis. So it's yeah. a double negative that can cause... Yeah. The, the, you know, the potential of this is for thousands of children to become victims that would not necessarily mm. happen. And that's what we really want to stop. Mm. Jadi, um, kalau kata Glenn gitu ya, um, sekarang ini kan semua, uh, apa ya, uh, banyak sekali anak-anak yang seperti tadi kita bilang juga gitu, banyak sekali anak-anak sekarang ini lagi di rumah, gara-gara orang tuanya lagi work from home, dan anak-anak sendiri juga harus online schooling. Um, gue sendiri juga punya dua anak gitu kan. Dan uh, dan anak gue sendiri juga harus online schooling juga gitu. Dan emang bener kalau misalnya kita lagi work from home. Yang ada anak-anak kita kasih gadget. Dan dia udahlah lo menyibukkan diri aja gitu. Nah sebelum masa pandemi. Itu ada 750 ribu predator atau pedofil di luar sana yang tercatat gitu ya, yang yang ketahuan gitu. Nah, itu sebelum masa pandemi. Setelah masa pandemi, itu numbernya atau angkanya menjadi tinggi, makin tinggi lagi gitu kan. Dan 
uh, begitu juga dengan penggunaan sosial media di saat pandemi ini banyak sekali anak-anak yang di bawah umur pun ya di bawah umur 18 gitu yang um, mereka juga udah mulai pakai TikTok mereka pakai uh, apa Instagram Facebook dan masih banyak lagi lah Twitter dan lain-lain gitu cuman intinya si Uh, pedofil-pedofil ini dan juga sexual predators ini mereka akhirnya mulai uh, reach out nih karena emang si nyokap bokapnya lagi ngurusin kerjaannya mereka si anak-anaknya di sosial media yang gak tau mau ngapain juga kan uh, killing time aja nah biasanya di facebook atau di tiktok dan di sosial media ini ada moderator moderator ini yang akan menjaga kalau misalnya sampai um, si anak ini lagi didatengin sama pedofilia tapi sayangnya karena sekarang lagi pada work from home semua, uh, keefektifan moderator ini pun juga menurun gitu. Karena mereka nggak ada di kantor. Sehingga yang terjadi adalah um, dari sosial media sendiri itu jadi nggak ada yang jaga, yang jadi nggak terlalu ketat lagi. Dan itu sangat bahaya banget. Nah, ya, um, sekarang gue akan menuju ke pertanyaan berikutnya gitu ya. Pertanyaan berikutnya, kira-kira orang tua sendiri harus harus bagaimana nih supaya tahu kalau misalnya anaknya itu lagi ternyata lagi di grooming nih sama sexual predator. So, um, uh, Glenn, what what types of things parents or carers or teachers, you know, babysitters or our helpers, you know, they should be looking for that could indicate that a child has become a victim of this type of online crime? Yeah, yeah. It's something that, that our, you know, parents and and teachers and carers really need to be to be vigilant of. We need to be vigilant of it at any time. But but obviously now, given the increased risks, we need to be even more vigilant of this. So, the the effects that these types of things can have on children is is long term effects. Uh, you know, that can affect their mental health. It can it affect them emotionally, and 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 ultimately can lead yeah. to physical harm. So essentially, you know. What we need to look at is in the short term, what sort of, uh, you know, indicators does a child give when they're under trauma, when they're suffering from this type of stress? Because if you can imagine this situation where uh, a young girl at high school has shared uh, an intimate photograph of herself to her boyfriend um, yeah. and her boyfriend has now broken up with her, okay, and he's contacted her and said, okay, um, you know, I want you to send me uh, another photograph, but more intimate, showing more of your body. And if you don't, then I'm going to show all your friends at school and I'm going to send it to your parents and this. So the girl is now under severe stress about the fear of if she doesn't do this, what's going to happen to her reputation and everything else, so her getting into trouble, um, you know, and then the shame and the embarrassment of everybody seeing something like that. So she feels compelled to take another photograph and then hands that. And as you can see, this is the manipulation. So, and this is between two kids from school. We see this, we deal with this. We've had cases like this recently in Bali. Um, and, we've, and we've dealt with ones in Jakarta as well. So this can also then be done the same strategy by adults, uh, whether they're posing as another child, a celebrity, like I said, or they're being an adult themselves. The point is, is, to, is to blackmail, is to get them to give a little bit and then use that against them to get more and use that against them to get more. And in the sense of you're not just built trust in a relationship, you've also, you can also build fear so that you can keep them quiet with fear. You've got, you've got them manipulated. Uh, you can mm. continue to commit offences against them as a victim um, for your sexual gratification without, mm. uh, or what I would say, with impunity, without fear of them telling somebody because you're holding something over them. So what we need to look for as parents and carers in our kids if they're suffering in this sort of situation is immediately there's going to be changes in their, in their behaviour, in their demeanour. We see that loss of appetite, changes in, changes in sleep patterns. Um, we see you know, irritability uh, that where there probably wasn't before, things that wouldn't, they would snap at that maybe they wouldn't before. And maybe this is sounding like a lot of teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> already when they're not under stress uh, but but I think as parents you know we're we're pretty in tune with our children or, or we should be and we know when something's wrong and if we see something like this in our child we see that there's been a change in their new their, their normal way of going about life we need to sit them down and we need to ask what's going on hmm. okay so um jadi kalau kata Glenn juga emang ini apa ya 
apa sih yang terjadi di otak anak itu ketika uh, you know uh, ketika hal-hal seperti ini terjadi gitu ya jadi um, si manipulator ini ya si si pedofilia ini dia atau mungkin contohnya nih ada satu kasus banget ini baru aja terjadi di Bali dan uh, baru ditangkap sama Project Karma jadi orang seorang cowok yang mungkin mengambil foto yang fotonya pun juga mungkin you know fotonya emang kurang senonoh tapi nggak separah itu gitu ya dan setelah di uh, ke ke pacarnya gitu dia bilang uh, lebih eh, mungkin lebih lebih parah lebih senonoh lagi gitu ya itu uh, eh yang lebih tidak senonoh lagi itu gue akan menyebarkan foto ini ke teman-teman lo gue akan membuat lo malu gue akan you know dan lain-lain gitu dan akhirnya si pacarnya akhirnya mulai mau nggak mau memberikan foto-foto yang lainnya juga justru malah semakin parah dia masuk ke dalam satu lingkaran setan tersebut nah dan itu um, apa ya, strategi ketakutan dan strategi mempermalukan itulah yang biasanya dipakai sama pedofilia dan dan juga anak-anak sebaya gitu dan itu sangat hati-hati banget nah sebagai orang tua atau misalnya lo di sini yang nonton gitu lo adalah seorang kakak atau mungkin lo Uh, kenal ada saudara sepupu lu yang mungkin pernah ngalamin ini juga gitu ya lu harus perhatiin banget lu harus perhatiin banget apakah uh, tiba-tiba ada perubahan dalam kebiasaannya dia tiba-tiba dia mulai kehilangan nafsu makan tiba-tiba dia uh, mempunyai uh, masalah tidur yang yang aneh gitu you know, yang tadinya nggak ada apa-apa tiba-tiba jadi ada gitu nah mungkin bisa diajak ngobrol mungkin bisa diajak ter- transparan dan terbuka gitu karena Um, seringkali, again, ini adalah sesuatu yang tabu Gue tahu banget di Indonesia ini sesuatu yang tabu banget uh, Aneh banget Gue aja kalau misalnya mau ngomongin tentang hal ini Kepada anak gue sendiri Gue pasti risih banget dan gue gak, gak nyaman banget Tapi kalau misalnya Lo uh, Melihat tiba-tiba Anak lo atau mungkin adik lo Atau mungkin uh, saudara sepupu lo gitu ya, Yang tiba-tiba mempunyai hal seperti ini mungkin gak ada salah untuk diajakin ngobrol, diajak ngobrol uh, atau mungkin kasih tahu ke orang tuanya gitu, karena uh, itu adalah sesuatu yang uh, you know mencurigakan gitu. Nah uh, kemarin kejadian di Bali uh, antara pasangan ya cowok sama cewek dan dan ya itu um, akhirnya si anaknya anaknya tersebut yang diancam akhirnya membuka semuanya gitu. Dia bilang kayak oke okay, selama ini gue diancam sama dia, selama ini hidup gue nggak ya, bahagia dan dia sempat depresi juga dan lain-lain gitu. So uh, oke okay, um, I, I I need to have more Glenn like uh, tips tips gitu ya, uh, you know tips uh, untuk orang tua melindungi anak-anaknya. Dar, uh, dari pedofilia gitu. So I need like top 10 tips for parents, uh, carers or maybe teachers to protect kids from being a victim of this kind of crimes. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, my top 10 tips. Uh, I follow. There's a lot of really great information out there on government uh, websites in Australia and in Indonesia. And and, I, and what we might do after after our call today, if it's okay with you, maybe put up. Uh, a couple of links in the comments that people can uh, can later on uh, just about uh, where to report these crimes and, and who to talk to in the authorities, uh, which which I can cover shortly. But but my 10 tips in, in order to try to prevent these crimes from happening in the first place uh, is firstly, I think this, like any parenting tip, a cyber safety tip is no different. We need to have a good relationship with our child to begin with. So there needs to be a good open communication with your child to begin with uh, for any of this sort of thing to work. But I think the first thing is is have an open conversation with with your child about their online usage in their free time. Um, and, and don't just do that conversation once. Have that conversation regularly with your child about, you know, what's the latest app that's come out. It, what I find with my kids is it changes weekly. What was so popular last week is now change to some other app that they're all using. And, and as a parent, it's almost impossible to keep up with the trend of apps. But if you're having a regular conversation with your child about their online usage, you get to see a, 
a pattern of you know forming of what apps that they tend to use more than others and their friends are using more than others so i think okay. once you've got an idea of, of that and their apps that they're using or do, actually do you want to do you want to translate yeah that yeah I'll, I'll, cut, I'll cut you down because like you know a tent tip is a lot give a okay <laughs> excuse me <laughs> that's not coughing it's just i sneeze just just letting everybody know that but um tadi yang Glenn bilang yang pertama adalah mempunyai hubungan yang baik dengan uh, anak I think I wanna huh, I wanna sneeze again that's so weird that's so weird <laughs> no trust me that's not COVID uh, that's so weird when you just sneeze in Instagram live it's like oh my god, oh, oh my god. Like you have, oh, you yeah. have like all the weirdest the weirdest face like oh Yeah. Oke, okay. so um, apa yang pertama adalah mempunyai hubungan yang transparan dan dialog yang baik dengan dengan uh, anak gitu ya, uh, ajak ngobrol aja. Nah, yang paling penting adalah ngomongin soal aplikasi terbaru yang lagi digandrungin sama teman-teman mereka. Aplikasi yang mungkin lo tahu minggu lalu, mungkin sekarang udah berbeda dengan aplikasi yang mereka lagi suka sekarang. Jadi kayak cepat banget aplikasi itu evolve nya cepat banget jadi kayak uh, apa ya uh, perlu diperhatiin banget um, mereka lagi hitsnya apa gitu dan beneran sih komunikasi komunikasi dan komunikasi itu penting banget oh ya yeah, by the way kalau misalnya kalian pengen nanya apa apa sama Glenn uh, bisa langsung tanya aja di question box itu yang ada di bawah yang ada tulisan tanda tanya dan sekali lagi kalau misalnya kalian baru masuk ini kita lagi ngomongin tentang bagaimana mencegah pedofilia menyakiti uh, anak-anak atau keluarga yang kita sayang um, dari predator-predator digital gitu ya. Jadi emang ini pembicaraan agak berat banget dan you know gue ngerti nggak semua orang bakal suka sama pembicaraan ini apalagi ini sesuatu yang tabu. Alright, so Glenn, uh, so that's like I think two tips that you just shared. Yeah, that's two tips. Yeah. Do you, you mind if he can? He, he wants to do the third tip. Yeah, read that one there. All right. Say hello. Bring it on. Hello. Hello. Hey, what's your name? This is buddy? Matthew. Matthew. Yes, hi, Daniel. Hello, Daniel. Hi, Matthew. All right. <laughs> I can't. I can't wait for you to tell me uh, the third and the fourth tip. Okay. You want to read this one here? That one there. Oh, sorry. This one. This one here. Yep. Know which apps your kids are using. Check privacy and security settings and for data privacy, webcam access, GPS access. Monitor your child's usage. Usage time, screen time monitoring, monitoring. Yep. monitoring. Yeah. is a good feature. DMs for for time to time and daily monitor them. Move. Yeah. Okay. That'll that'll do. Well done. All right. Okay. So thank you, thank Matthew. You. You're a legend. Thank you so much. That was so good. Yo, I love it. I love the way you you tell it with such an authority. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, can I go back to work? Yes. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Matthew. Jadi, uh, itu ya tadi, ada dua tips that. lagi. Ya, ada, ada tips, tips nomor tiga sama tips nomor okay. empat. Yang pertama adalah, uh, apa, cek DM-nya kadang-kadang. Itu sekali-sekali gitu dicek DM-nya. Dan, uh, was it security setting, was it? The, the privacy yeah, setting? Yeah, most of these apps have security settings for GPS, data privacy, Bluetooth, webcam access. That you can disable or enable, and up to the parent to make that decision whether their child should have access on those apps to those sorts of things. Jadi, um, ya, yeah, jadi kayak banyak banget kayak privacy setting yang bisa kita rubah kalau misalnya uh, kita orang tua gitu ya ke. Nah, anak-anak sehingga kita sendiri bisa ngecek dan kita bisa tahu ada GPS-nya juga itu yang paling penting banget uh, untuk tahu anak-anak kita ada di mana walaupun sekarang ini like, karena work from home udah pasti di rumah gitu ya. Tapi kalau misalnya uh, you know misalnya nanti kembali udah normal lagi ada GPS-nya kita bisa cek juga dan cek the DMs, right? The DMs, the private messages like uh, once in a while. How yeah. often how often do you check it by the way? Look again. See, this is again. It's it's an it's an individual parent's dis- decision based on how well they know their child. Um, yeah. You know, some kids are not going to be happy about that. Uh, you know, but as a parent, what I find works on any of these tips, if a child's not happy with the the process, always remember you as the parent are the boss. You're in charge, and at the end of the day, you hold the key to the Wi-Fi password in the household. And if the kids aren't <laughs> going to play ball, change the Wi-Fi password. See how that goes. <laughs> Oke, okay, jadi uh, emang 
pasti banget ya nggak banyak orang anak-anak gitu khususnya yang nggak uh, pengen privasinya itu di otak atik gitu sama orang tuanya. Nah, cuman uh, kalau misalnya how how old do you think how old do you think um, you know if we're able to check our kids like what until they're 18 like you know basically under 18 where we still have like pretty much the authority to check their DMs or what do you think? Well, legally, as long as they're not an adult, they're, they're still your child, then legally you have the right to do that, absolutely. But whether that would work in every family scenario, probably not. Uh, it's an individual parent's uh, discretion as to how they're parenting their child on this. But I would think if their child has demonstrated responsibility over the internet over a period of years, I think you begin to have confidence confidence in your child doing the right thing by themselves mm. and your family. So some of those things might be real, you know, not so strict as they get older. Uh, but I do think it's important before you allow your child to use any app uh, that you check mm. out the app. Um, you know, many of them have age restrictions. You know, I can't tell you how many times we have cases of children that are, that are under 13 years of age that have had these problems yet they're on and the problems would come from using an app that they shouldn't be using it's it's they they they're not old enough by the by the own app standards so yeah. parents need to be vigilant of that too jadi uh, sekali lagi kayak benar-benar tahu banget aplikasi-aplikasi apa yang si anak-anak ini lakuin men lu bayangin kalau misalnya sekarang ini anak umur 12 tahun punya aplikasi Tinder yo <laughs> Yeah. Okay, just just say, you know, like a 12 year old owns a freaking Tinder, right? That's like, okay, you know, that's a dan sayang ya kalau misalnya ada orang tua yang Tinder itu apaan? Yo. <laughs> Go check the phone right now, right? That's a, right. that's a red flag right there. Nah, jadi maksud gue kayak uh, you know, lu sendiri juga sebisa mungkin berkomunikasi, ngobrol, cari tahu. Uh, dan yang kedua, uh, kalau misalnya sampai si anak itu nggak mau ngasih akses untuk lu ngecek DM-nya dan lain-lain, lu nggak kasih dia akses untuk wifi-nya. You know, like, karena lu yang punya rumah gitu kan, jadi sebagai orang tua kita masih punya otoritas untuk melakukan hal tersebut gitu. Tapi again, ini um, setiap keluarga beda, kita nggak tahu kalau misalnya lu uh, adalah betul keluarga yang, 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 you know, yang, yang bisa seperti itu atau enggak gitu. So, you know, okay, I, I want to share something ya. Yeah. Uh, this is just a case that I know. Uh, a friend of mine, a friend like a friend of mine, heard this uh, that another friend is doing or or whatever, right? So um, the uh, middle schoolers, anak-anak SMP, gitu, middle schoolers, I guess. Uh, it's so easy to to just okay. The parents don't allow them to have phones. So what these predators do, they go out to the school and offer them free phones in yes. exchange of other sexual services. That is sick, yes. right? But they do it because they know uh, the, the kid needs phone more than anything. Nah, jadi gue gue pernah I'm just gonna tell this in, uh, in Indonesian. Jadi gue pernah dengar ada anak SMP gitu ya yang maksudnya gini banyak banget anak-anak SMP itu yang karena nggak dikasih handphone sama orang tuanya, yang ada si predator-predator ini atau pedofilia ini malah mulai nongkrong-nongkrong di depan sekolahnya atau apa ngasih handphone baru, you know handphone yang harganya paling cuma sejuta atau dua juta gitu ya ke anak ini disuruh umpetin dari nyokapnya atau apa dan akhirnya sebagai barter itu um, minta yang hal-hal yang aneh-aneh dan berarah konotasinya ke seksual gitu. Nah, jadi those kind of things happen, you know, di di di, di Jakarta. I'm not talking about like di dusun mana, di di desa mana gitu. It, I'm talking about in the big city like Jakarta. And it's it's so it's so scary, you know, things like that can happen. Um, have you ever had a case like that as well? Yeah, we've had we've had cases where it started online where there's been a, a communication online. Uh, but the, uh, of a sexual a child sex offender is to get the child off the standard platform. Like I said yeah. before, most of these platforms have got safety features built into them. The, the, what they will try to do is they're going to try to get them off off that platform onto an encrypted platform, like a WhatsApp or a Telegram 
or one of those types of instant messaging uh, applications where it's encrypted and it's very hard for authorities to be able to uh, obtain the, uh, the information from that company. And these, these offenders know yeah. that. Um, and, and ultimately then they would, if they can, try to get a physical meeting. And this is where okay. the, your scenario that you just gave comes into it where, right, now I've got them off Instagram or I've got them off whatever it was onto an encrypted one, which has now got me to meet them face to face. Now I'm going to give them a device that we can communicate with that their parents won't know about. Um, and, and, and it's also they're getting a new phone. So it's more likely that they're going to be compliant All part of that grooming process. So, yeah, we do see that. Okay, so um, we I think we're we were up to uh, tip number four. <laughs> I think we still have like six <laughs> tips left, Five, right? six, yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. Look, um, I, I guess look at when we when we said about uh, um, checking DMs. If your child is is downloading multiple uh, instant chat uh, applications, that would to me that would that would ring alarm bells. So again, it's monitoring what apps your child is using. If there's multiple apps, particularly encrypted type ones. Uh, I would be suspicious of that and I'd be asking them why they need those apps. Um, mm. Next tip would be uh, with in the settings on most phones, now whether you're an Android phone or a, uh, a, an iOS phone, uh, through, through the, the App Store or uh, Google Play, um, you know, there, there are apps there, but also built into the actual operating systems of phones, particularly in iOS, you can set up kids' accounts uh, under an Apple ID, for instance. Um, and I'm just specifically talking about Apple at the moment. Um, but as an Apple ID, uh, your child has its own account under your on, under your Apple ID. Sure. And it's attached to your credit card, that sort of stuff, if they're going to purchase apps. But yeah. what happens is if a child wants to download an app uh, off, off the App Store, it will actually send a request to the parent. And so the parent can actually then see the app, uh, look at it, open it up, uh, and read about it before they then authorise the child's account to be allowed to download it, uh, whether it's a free app or a paid app. Um, mm. that, that's a great idea, uh, you know, to do, yeah. to set up with your kids, yeah. Sure. Uh, jadi, uh, again, kalau misalnya lu ngeliat anak lu atau misalnya adik perempuan lu atau siapapun atau saudara sepupu lu, tiba-tiba di handphonenya banyak banget uh, chat, uh, apa ya, uh, yang kayak misalnya telegram gitu ya, yang harus pakai encrypted, encryption atau apa dan banyak gitu uh, itu itu red flag banget sih itu kayak uh, alarm banget gitu karena uh, kenapa dia punya banyak uh, chatting chatting yang yang harus di encrypt gitu yang rahasia banget dan habis yang kedua kalau misalnya lo adalah seorang tua uh, orang tua dan uh, lo um, apa ya uh, membuat account buat anak lo jangan lupa untuk connectin ke account lo sendiri gitu jadi ada untuk children children uh, account basically gitu yang tetap connect ke keluarganya. Okay, next. <laughs> next is is ha- again have that conversation with your child about the dangers of sharing personal information, sharing photographs, sharing videos, uh, not just with strangers on the internet, even with their friends or a boyfriend or girlfriend or uh, someone that they might at that time have a relationship in some way with. They need to understand that once something goes out onto the internet, it's now no longer in your control. Uh, where that is going to end up is now out of your control. And mm. so anything that we put onto the internet or make available on the internet, we need to understand that may be there for decades to come. Forever. Mm. And it's very hard for a child to fathom that. Some kids struggle with consequences of five minutes from now, let alone yeah. five years from now. Right, so, right. So as a parent, we really need to, to sit our kids down and obviously age appropriate and have that discussion with that child age appropriate about the dangers of sharing mm. not just uh, photographs and videos, but personal information of themselves or their family about mm. the dangers of, of your address being online or your, even your sexuality or your type of religion, all these types of things. People can build a profile on a person from their digital footprint. And believe me, if anybody knows this, I know this. We do this for a job in order to to track down child sex offenders. They leave digital footprints, and that's how we find them. That's how the authorities find them. So everybody else is no different. 
the more we interact and the more we use the internet, the more digital footprint we build. And that's, like I said, very hard for young children to truly understand. And that's why we have parents, guardians, teachers to, to, uh, to help protect our kids from this type of thing. Wow. So, but, but education and empowerment, sitting your child down and giving them the knowledge and explaining it to them empowers them to protect themselves and their friends online. That's so yeah. important. So, uh, jadi kata Glenn juga yang paling penting adalah kasih tahu, kasih jelas kepada anak-anak gitu ya. Udah pasti uh, tergantung umurnya, tapi kasih tahu ke mereka apapun yang mereka taruh di internet itu akan ada di internet selama-lamanya. Jadi, uh, hati-hati banget dengan apa yang ditaruh di internet gitu. Dan uh, again, age appropriate, jadi sebisa mungkin umurnya disesuaikan banget dengan pembicaraannya. Mungkin kalau misalnya lo lagi mau makan malam sama anak-anak, Gak ada, gak ada ini, lu bisa ceritain aja cerita, cerita lucu dimana lu nyesel gitu ya, kayak aduh gila, dulu papa pernah posting ini di internet dan akhirnya kesebar dan akhirnya sampai sedetik ini masih ada gitu misalnya, itu uh, whatever, papa papa lagi masih party misalnya, <laughs> whatever, tapi yang pasti habis itu yang kedua, um, uh, oh man, I forgot what were you talking about, um, I should have written some notes, Down. That's hard for you, I know. Uh, ya, itulah. Mudah-mudahan ngerti lah tadi. <laughs> Pokoknya setelah komunikasi, and then, uh, um, oh, digital footprint. Sorry, digital footprint. Jadi kayak um, apa? Uh, apapun yang mereka taruh di internet itu akan meninggalkan uh, apa jejak digital ya. Jadi jejak digital ini. Uh, ini sebenarnya ternyata yang digunakan oleh uh, Glenn dan Project Karma untuk menangkap pedofilia-pedofilia juga gitu. Jadi semua interaksi yang terjadi di internet itu bisa terekam dan uh, kita akan meninggalkan si digital footprint ini. Begitu juga dengan anak tersebut. Makanya ini ini ada double side of the coin ya. Jadi uh, makanya harus hati-hati banget sama apa yang kalian post di internet gitu. Dan khususnya untuk anak-anak. Translatornya just so annoying. Thank you so much, my nanny in Bali. That's that's so. Uh, I think you. you're doing a great job. Yeah, thank you. No, it's okay. It's okay. You know, things that uh, you do for. Um. Uh, anyway, um. Are we are we finishing on the ten tips? Uh, two more. I think last two tips. Um, uh, have a with your child. Have a contact that your child knows that 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 they can go to if they're experiencing any type of problem on the internet. It might be you, it might be their teacher, it might be their auntie, someone they trust, someone they feel comfortable talking to, that they know that if they start experiencing a problem, that's who they can talk to, that they can trust, they're not going to be judged, uh, and that that person will help them. And the last tip would be, as a parent, know where to go to report if there is a problem when the law needs to get involved, if the police need to become involved, where to go. Uh, so I would suggest uh, if people feel a bit reluctant to talk with the police at, at the start, if they're not sure, uh, they can contact us uh, on our website. Um, we can put the links up later, but it's basically, there it is right there, projectcarma.org.id. Sure. There's a reporting section there. People can fill in in Bahasa, in English, whatever's uh, going to be Bahasa Indonesia. Um, and we will then make contact with them and see what advice we can give and where they need to go. Uh, or they can contact law enforcement directly themselves. And my suggestion would be to go through KPAI. Uh, their website has an online reporting form that you can fill in details and, you'll, and they will get back to you. And also through the Polri website, which we can supply both those links that can go up in the comments later. Oke, okay, so uh, yang dua tips terakhir, by the way, thank you banget yang udah encourage translatornya. Sorry, tadi agak sedikit sakit ya perih hati ini, tapi di jadi di jadi di uh, ini ya di 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 apa disemangatin sama uh, teman-teman juga gitu kan uh, dari Lidiani, XG, uh, Lolagin, uh, and uh, God God with Google, thank you so much. But anyway. Um, Dua tips terakhir, yang pertama adalah uh, ng- ngobrol dengan anak-anak, uh, make sure kasih tahu mereka kalau misalnya kita sebagai orang tua itu menyayangi mereka apa adanya dan kita sangat uh, terbuka tanpa menghakimi dengan problemnya mereka. Gak ada problem apapun yang kecil dan gak penting, problem 
sekecil-kecil apapun itu tetap penting bagi orang tuanya, ya nggak sih? Nah, jadi sebisa mungkin make sure kalau misalnya mereka tahu itu, jadi ketika mereka ada masalah sedikit pun, ada yang mengganggu mereka sedikit pun, mereka tahu mereka harus lari kemana, gitu. Bukan malah menyimpan di dalam hati mereka. Dan yang terakhir adalah kalian juga harus tahu lapor ke siapa. Oke, okay, bisa lapor ke polisi, lapor ke kepala desa misalnya, lapor ke, uh, ke uh, RT <laughs> atau orang tua gitu kan dan lain-lain. Tapi kalau misalnya kalian pengen uh, terrahasiakan identitasnya, kalian bisa langsung ke projectkarma.or.id. Mereka akan merahasiakan identitas kalian dan mereka akan melakukan investigasi langsung ke tempat uh, dan tanpa dan uh, sebisa mungkin tanpa Um, memperlihatkan identitas kalian kayak gitu. Jadi untuk menangkap si predator tersebut. Jadi ini penting banget. So again, uh, guys, langsung aja projectkarma.or.id. Oke. Okay. So um, I'm gonna start asking. Um, we only have four minutes left. Four minutes yep. left. Um, oh, so there's one question. Uh, from May 1977. Hi Daniel, is Roblox? I don't know what Roblox is. Minecraft, Minecraft of the game and other games. Do you think um, there are predators there? Maybe in the chatting bot or maybe in the chatting. Uh, are there a lot of uh, you know pedophiles and predators in that game, in those games? Yeah. Great question. Uh, yes, um, we have a great relationship with, with Roblox. Um, I've personally spoken with their director for, for security and safety uh, in all of the APEC region. And yeah, they do have issues with this. Um, they have put mechanisms in place to pick up, uh, automatically pick up certain keywords in chats because there is direct messaging in these game platforms uh, between um, players. And that's really hard for parents to, to go back onto. Uh, you probably have to look at the logs of, of the game, and not many parents are going to be that technically minded to go in and go through you know, all their, their, their child's uh, chats in these games. So it's, it's, it's actually a common place where, where pedophiles will come to test the water with, uh, with potential victims with a goal of getting them off the game chat and into an encrypted version of, uh, you know, instant chat, whether it be a WhatsApp okay. or a Telegram or a Kik or something yeah. like that. Yes, those yeah. cases happen. Uh, and gaming platforms are a popular hunting ground, and it's a, you know, a term that you can use for, for, these, pred yeah. for these predators. Yeah. yeah. Jadi, ya, yeah, betul banget di game. This is actually a really good question, but we I think we only have three minutes left. Um, uh, where is it? How do we get? How do we give an understanding for the children? Because in the end, they will get paranoid with their environment. What is you know? What is the healthy way of saying, "Hey, the world is dangerous," but yet it's okay to explore? You know. Sure, understand. I think we need to, to keep it, especially for younger children, to keep it really simple and, and liken it to stepping outside of the front door and walking out into the world, into the public. Would you go and hand a photograph to a complete stranger on the street? Would you mm. go and walk up to someone you hardly know and tell them your address and where you live? Of course mm. not. And a child would understand, not be appropriate. So they need to understand that The internet is no different. And we don't need mm. to be over paranoid about this. We just need to be vigilant of our safety. We wouldn't do those things in the real world in public. So we don't do it in the virtual world on the internet. Sure. Oke, okay, jadi kalau misalnya, sekarang kita kasih pertanyaan aja deh, misalnya kayak gini kepada anak-anak gitu. Kalau misalnya ada uh, stranger, stranger itu bahasa Indonesia apa? Orang asing ya, ke, uh, orang yang tidak dikenal, tiba-tiba minta kenalan gitu ya, dan habis itu... Um, You know, apakah kamu akan memberikan foto kamu kepada si orang yang tidak dikenal tersebut? Udah pasti enggak. Nah, kalau misalnya di kehidupan nyata kita nggak ngelakuin hal tersebut, kenapa kita ngelakuin hal tersebut di dunia digital gitu? Itu lebih parah lagi. Jadi mungkin dikasih understanding tersebut. Jadi jangan sampai kayak kita um, uh, apa ya memberi 
uh, over paranoia apa memberikan ketakutan yang berlebihan juga ke anak-anak gitu. Tapi intinya logik yang kita bisa lakukan di dunia nyata, coba kita lakukan juga di dunia digital. So Glenn, um, this is uh, you know a lot of people are thanking you right now. This is amazing. Um, you know, thank you so much again for your insights and it's uh, it's it's great again. This is another another last question, and this would uh, would probably be the closing as well. What, um, if we know there is a sex predator, who can we report it to? This is from Hello Unica. Yeah, obviously you're reporting it to law enforcement. The, the police in your area are the authority to deal with these types of crimes. Unfortunately, some people aren't sure which police to talk to or sometimes they don't feel comfortable talking with police. They don't trust them for some reason or something. So uh, people are free to contact us at any time and we are happy to listen to what their problem is and we're happy to give advice. We're not the police. We can't uh, go and you know, arrest people. But what we can do is we can establish the facts uh, and we can help the child and the family on behalf of the child and approach law enforcement on behalf of the family uh, and connect uh, it together in order for law enforcement to conduct an official investigation and then uh, report a crime. Uh, so that, that is the process that would normally happen. And we would recommend if people don't feel comfortable talking to the police, they are more than welcome to contact us uh, through the medium we spoke before. Um, but mm. we can put some links up in Slater uh, for official government websites and the police uh, website where people can report online. And also, uh, there's, a, there's a number, I'm pretty sure it's through all of Indonesia, which is 110. Okay. 110. Jangan percayakan Hollywood dengan 911 or 911. No. It's 110 di Indonesia. All right, guys? 110 itu langsung terhubung ke, ke, ke polisi. 110. Ingat, 110. 110, whatever you, 11, no, uh, whatever you want to remember it, 11, pemain sepak bola, ada berapa, 11, lawan berapa, no, ya, yeah, 11, no, 110, itu nomor telepon polisi, bukan 911, oke, okay. nah, tapi, um, yang lebih penting lagi, kalau misalnya lu nggak bisa ke polisi for some reason, nggak bisa ke kantor polisi untuk melaporkan, ya, lu bisa langsung aja ke projectkarma.org.id, karena mereka akan menyembunyikan identitas kalian, dan, uh, jadi, nggak ada lagi faktor, malu gitu kan um, karena emang karena ini sesuatu yang tabu topik yang sangat tabu dan ini menimbulkan rasa yang malu uh, jadi gue rasa uh, you know banyak orang yang tidak nyaman untuk ngomong hal seperti ini gitu jadi kalau misalnya lu kenal siapapun dan apa atau lu tahu kira-kira nih anak lagi mengalami hal yang you know abusive gitu ya misalnya langsung aja ke projectkarma.org.id Glenn, I just want to thank you so much again. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your insights. Um, I learned so much from this today. And, uh, you know, your your experience is it's amazing. And uh, I hope you stay safe. I can't wait for you to be back in Bali and we can have that chat again. Um, you know, and yeah, stay safe, bro. And send my best to Matthew and, and your son, your other son. <laughs> and thank you for your your interest in protecting children in Indonesia and having me here today to talk about this important issue and I appreciate your support uh, to help protect kids in Indonesia mate thank you so much thank you Glenn I'll see you all right bye bro Woo, berat gila itu berat banget pembicaraan kita berat banget guys uh, tapi again gua gak ngira by, gua pikir ya by the end of this life mungkin cuma ada dua orang kali <laughs> lo lagi satu sama satu lagi Um, Johanna Napitulu <laughs> Gulali <laughs> I don't know tapi, um, tapi jujur kayak Gue ber- bersyukur banget Kalian ada 70 orang gitu Masih hampir 80 orang Masih nonton sampai habis Sampai terakhir Dan uh, no gue bukan MC KDI Thank you But yeah thank you banget kalian uh, udah nonton Dan again kalau misalnya kalian um, Kira-kira kenal sama siapapun Yang mungkin Uh, you know, lu kenal ada anak gitu yang yang ada apa ya kemungkinan bisa jadi target dari pedofilia dan juga sexual predator. Nah itu hati-hati banget. Please, uh, you know, laporin ke projectkarma.org.id atau lu bisa follow aja Instagram mereka dan lu bisa 
lihat sebenarnya kerjaan mereka seperti apa. Lu bayangin, di semasa work from home ini, gue kemarin baru ngobrol sama Glenn juga, semasa work from home mereka bisa nangkep pedofilia di Thailand. <laughs> itu keren banget, man. <laughs> itu keren banget. Jadi, uh, dan itu ditelusuri melalui digital footprint tersebut. gitu Jadi, again, um, kita harus hati-hati banget, apalagi sebagai orang tua yang peduli sama anak-anaknya, komunikasikan terus sama anak-anaknya, dan uh, ya, yeah, be safe, stay safe, stay healthy, guys. Alright.